Simon. So um, I'm here on behalf of my, of my team. Uh, Mona Rez is the, the team leader and I'm her assistant. So uh, Mona is now in Italy. She, is, uh, she finished her master's uh, lately and now she is doing her PhD in Politecnico di Milano. And uh, uh, actually I'm a lecturer. I'm a lecturer in, uh, in the American University in Cairo. Uh, I'm one of the organizers of the master's, uh, master program for sustainable development and I'm a guest lecturer in Oslo University. I have an excellent background of environmental engineering, civil engineering and architecture. Um, so mainly um, we were friends for three years already and we were talking about different things related to education and architecture and uh, green building and so on, which is the mutual interest between me and Mona. The main thing here is that uh, we all have some issues uh, dealing with students. Learning with direct messages, I mean teaching your students with direct messages, is not very efficient. I mean, to give the, uh, the whole curriculum in uh, lectures and presentations and exams is not an efficient way of learning. But the problem-based learning is more efficient. I, I've been thinking a lot of how to give an indirect message that could be implemented and could be more interactive towards the students, something that they could remember, and something that they could relate with or be familiar with. So um, one day I was wondering with Monda, uh, with Mona, we were talking about the same concept, and then I remembered that um, uh, I have a very, uh, a very, uh, uh, I, 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 I'm a passionate of playing games. I'm a gamer. Okay, so like most of my generation, we play games, and games is very interesting things, not just for me but also for my students. And when I thought about it, that, um, I thought that I only like games because of the gameplay itself. But no, it's actually about the artwork and the art style. There are many things in the video games themselves that resemble what we do in architecture uh, department, for example, and what we give to our students, then the reality. So what we are going to talk about here is that we are trying to make video games that could be an educational tool or an educational application towards the students. So first I'm going to give you some examples of games that are implementing architecture styles inside them. So for example, there is a very famous game called Half-Life 2, which was uh, made in 2004, and one of the um, uh, bigger elements inside it is a city called City 17. It has uh, drawn many influences and uh, many sources from the cities that already exist in Eastern Europe parts, like in Poland, Ukraine, uh, Romania, and so on, with the same buildings and, and same sceneries and so on. Uh, in 2006, there is a game called Final Fantasy XII, uh, it revolves around a fictional world called uh, Ivalis, and this Ivalis is drawing many influences again from our Islamic uh, architecture style. I mean, look here, it's like in this picture, for example, in the Badar, this looks like Qahirat al Mu'azz or Hussein or something, but you can see this everywhere. Also, this place, you can relate to it from all the uh, uh, Arabic movies from the old eras and so on. Uh, there is a game series called Assassin's Creed. It's uh, based on true live events in the 15th century, 17th century, and so on. And one of, the, one of these games is taking place in Italy, in the older cities of Venice, Florence, with the same architecture style. I mean, they are not reimagining the whole city. No, they are putting the same city as it is. And you're not here to, uh, to view it like a museum. No, you're interacting with the uh, non-playing characters and you're assigned with tasks in order to finish the game. So you're learning and you're viewing this city while you're playing. So you're getting this in dark message that I am talking about. Also in this game, uh, it, is, um, it takes place in Los Angeles but in 1947. So it's, it's preserving the heritage of these cultures some way or another. Another types of games let you, as a player, design your own city. Like in this game here is called SimCity. SimCity is a game where you design um, one or more cities. In this version, for example, you can design more, of, more up to 16 different cities and you have to correlate all of them together in order to make them work. And there is another interesting game called uh, Blockhood. In Blockhood, you are assigned to design a complete community which is sustainable using blocks of different functions. And uh, then you have to make sure uh, what resources are your, are your blocks using and producing, are all of your units accessible, and are your structures designed really reasonable and, and sound. Okay. Um, the main difference between SimCity and the other games I was talking about is that you have the freedom to design what you, what you can do. I mean, in reality, when you are assigned to do a project, 
there is some kind of uh, uh, annoying limitations. The owner wants this design, for example, and you you might not want the same thing. So you have you have to debate all the time. There is a deadline, but in in this game you don't have all these limitations. You can be doing anything you do freely. So what we mainly want to do is that we are going to design an educational application or an educational video game, but not just for designing cities, but to interact with with the uh, surroundings of these cities. And also we are going to implement some simulation tools regarding the energy, for example. So, is this applicable? Can it happen? Yes. Uh, but first let's talk about what's building energy simulation. Simulation in general is modeling of a virtual replica of, of any process of, or any object or anything. And make sure that this object is, uh, is working under your scenarios. Okay? So regarding the energy simulation itself, you are mainly talking about the energy consumption simulation, making sure that the, this object or this structure is consuming energy with the limits that you need. Not only that, but you can also apply your own uh, constraints and make sure that, for example, this green energy simulation tool is going to, to work using green energy, using solar panels, using green, using green energy, using this type of insulation and so on, and, and check the differences between them. So why is it important? Because in a country like Egypt, um, and many other countries too, most of the energy consumption is coming from the domestic sector, from the buildings themselves. You are con we are consuming energy in a very uh, high manner from our homes, not just the factories or, and the traffic and so on, but also from our homes. So we are trying to do this simulation in order to save energy somehow or another. Not just for our buildings, but also for the historic sites, and I'm going to talk about this now. There are many energy simulation tools. The one we are currently studying is Ecotech, but there are many others. There is Energy Plus and so on. Basara and Basari, sorry. Okay. So mainly uh, energy simulation for historic, historic, historic buildings is not just for designing them because they are already designed, but you are trying to make them uh, extend their lifetime. You are trying to preserve these historic sites as much as possible. Okay. And mainly there are three aspects we have to take into account when we are doing the energy simulation for historic buildings. The resource usage regarding the cost, the energy, the impact on the environment, the conservation, how much you are conserving it from integrity, accessibility, pollution, moisture, uh, weird factors, and the use, whether it's really comfortable for the visitors of this historic place, the, uh, can, they, can they work out with these routines, what is the type of usage, and so on. When we concentrate on these uh, three aspects, we can see that each topic of them is very important. For example, the uh, resources, we have to check the energy performance, uh, we have to check the effect fluctuation and the changes in the temperature inside the building. And uh, regarding, for example, the, uh, the, the conservation, we have to check the moisture rate, we have to check the mold the growth, the fluctuations, the salt activity, and so on. And regarding the comfort, we have to check many other things. Okay, so um, we can say that energy simulation is really essential. It's not an option, it's really essential in order to preserve the historic site somewhere on Asri. Uh, I'm going to give you a small example on um, a project that was made by other researchers, one of many other projects made worldwide, on how to use energy simulation in order to preserve and adjust the historic site life path. So, uh, there is a place the room, it's one of the rooms in a very uh, old building in, um, in one of the faculties in, the, in France. So one of these faculties have many buildings, some of them are modern, some of them are old. In one of these old buildings there is a room called Gonzo, and this Gonzo room, uh, the researcher decided to do some energy simulation research on it. So what they did is that they checked first the lifetime of this room and they found that it is uh, wearing, it's, it's, it's decaying, and there are many problems happening in this room, mainly because of the energy consumption. And they found that the main uh, problem is coming from the window position and the size of it. So th they decided to do energy simulation in order to adjust this before they apply it. So first they collected all the data they, ca they could, and they got, for example, the temperature of the, of the room through, all the, through the whole year, and the weather conditions and so on, and then they used two different applications. One of them is to, to do the structure uh, shape of the, um, of the room itself, and using AutoCAD, for example, or Reddit, in order to do the model shape of the room itself. 
and the other ones, uh, like Ecotech, they are trying to do the energy simulation of this structure system. Using these two models, they are getting a visual model which can give them the, the true condition of this room after applying the new energy solution. Okay. Uh, what they needed are three things. First, are the software and hardware in order to work the two uh, applications, the structure one and the energy simulation one. And then input devices in order to, uh, to view what is happening through the, the VR uh, devices and the joystick, for example, in order to switch the different scenarios. And uh, a highly uh, output system in order to render what's, what are the results going to, to look like. And the results are something like this. I mean, you stand inside this room and then you look around and you see what, where are the, the, the parts with, with higher temperature than the normal, which are cooler than the normal and so on. Okay. And then you can switch between, between all the scenarios. I mean, if you, if you, for example, if you want to know the, the exact temperature of this room in uh, January 6, then you can choose this scenario and you check the new uh, vision of this room looking like this. You can adjust using the joystick and then you see something like this. These blocks are the ones telling you the energy consumption values and so on. So finally what we are trying to do here, we are not trying to do simulation as it is, we are not trying to design things as it is, no, but we are trying to do an interactive video game with tasks regarding our course. I mean, if we are teaching an energy simulation course, then we have to put uh, um, we have to make a video game where you have your own story, you, ha you have your own tasks, you have your own uh, scenarios, and then you come up with indirect messages as your result. Thank you very much.